All right, so I'm going to show you how to create a space truss similar to this in Grasshopper. And this could be applied to any surface so that it is adaptable and can be applied to a number of different projects. The logic that I use to, to build this can also be applied to other surface techniques in Grasshopper. So we're going to start, I'll disable this. Kind of start fresh. So I have a surface that I created in Grasshopper. I used the surface from three corner points or four. You can just create any surface. I've lifted up some of the edges using points on and just manipulated these. So I have a surface. I want to call that in Grasshopper. So I'm going to double click, type SRF for surface right click on the component set one surface and from here I want to divide this surface so I want to divide it in two directions using the U and the V so every surface has a U and a V direction I want to divide it based on that so I'm gonna take the surface and deconstruct B rep so DEC you'll see this component it's also here under surface analysis deconstruct B rep okay, so I'm gonna plug that in I'm taking the surface deconstructing it into faces edges and vertices what I'm interested in is one of these edges so if I mouse over this it's outputting four edges I want this one. So what I'm going to do is type item and use my list item component. I'm going to grab one the edges, plug that into the L of my list item. And so what this is doing is item basically says, okay, if I have four things in a list, give me number one or give me number two or number three or number four of in this case these edges so in this case I want I don't know number two maybe looks like number one so I have in my case this one so grabbing edge number one grasshopper starts counting at zero so it goes zero one two three okay, so I'm gonna grab in my case edge number one what I want to do is divide it so I'm going to use the divide curve component. So double click. And again, that's also under uh, curve division. And you'll see divide curve here. So I'm going to take that edge, divide it. By default, this is starting at 10. I can make this 12, double click, give it a slider. And from here, I want to be able to extract the ISO curves from this surface, so the curves that run in this direction, from these control or from, from these uh, points. Um, so to do that, I'm going to use the ISO curve component. So if I type ISO, it asks for a surface, which is going to be my original starting surface. It asks for UV points. Right now, these points are in the XY, XYZ coordinate system. So in order to convert these points from XYZ to UV, I need to use the surface closest point, which um, SRF space CP, you'll see surface closest point. So I did SRF space CP to get that. And that's under surface if you want to find that. But I'm going to plug in my sample point is are the points that I just created. And my surface is the original surface. So what it's doing is it's finding the corresponding UV points closest to these XYZ points on this surface. 
So now you'll see that I have UV points that I can plug in. And this is going to give me the ISO curves from that surface. I'll hide that. Okay, so I now have ISO curves. And if I just double click and type CRV, I can show you that the U direction is generating curves. The V direction is also trying to get curves from these points on that surface, but it's going in the wrong direction. So I'm not interested in the V, just the U. So I'm just going to be looking at those curves. All right, so I've subdivided this in one direction. I want to subdivide it in the other direction. So as you can guess, I'm going to do the same thing, but grab this edge, divide it into points, and extract the ISO curves in that direction. Okay, so I'm going to copy everything except this decompose, control C, control V, drop this down. And instead of extracting this edge, I want number two, which is going to be this edge. So you see that I just changed that. And once again, this is still in the U direction. I need to switch this to V. And now I see that my V uh, ISO curve are being highlighted here. So I'm going to hide everything except my last curves and you'll see that there's now a grid. So again, if you need to do any surface manipulation, this is a good starting point for that, not just building a space truss. But we have this series of curves, one in the U, one in the V direction. And I wanna use these curves to split my original surface. So I can use the split surface component or surface split mouse over that it's looking for a base surface I give it my original surface it's looking for curves to use to split it so I'm gonna plug that in hold shift plug that in as well and you'll see that it gets dark green that's because it's doing a lot of um, it's building a lot of surfaces so something's wrong with the data here if I mouse over it, it's getting 26 curves to split, one surface, and 46. So we need to flatten these curves so that instead of splitting it into multiple, you know, two surfaces for each, now it's just treating all of these as one set of curves when I flatten them. So now I have 144 split segments just to look at this i can bake it middle mouse click hit bake and each of these are individual panels so if you want to panelize the geometry this is a, a good kind of starter for that um, they're not planar but we are subdividing a surface so far so we have that done so there's a lot you can do just from this so make sure to so maybe save this as a separate file if you want to keep going. Um, what we want to do is build a space truss where we have uh, kind of a pyramid shape that's created. So to create a pyramid out of each of these, I want to grab the center point of the each uh, panel, grab that center point and push it up. But I don't want it to go up as in the Z direction. I want it to go up relative to this surface so you know it'll it'll be a normal to the surface so what i need to do is extract not only the center of each uh, face i want to extract the normal direction from that portion of the surface so i have my individual surfaces first i'm going to get the area so double click hit area this allows us to grab the centroid or the center of that geometry. I'm, don't, I'm not interested in the actual area. I just want to grab this center point. And so from that, I can say, OK, give me the normal um, to that point. 
So under surface, you'll see under analysis, there is evaluate surface. If I double click, type evaluate surface, it'll show up here. It asks for a surface and a UV coordinate. So once again, I'm gonna use my split surface as my surface. And since our area is giving us the center point in X, Y, Z, we want the corresponding UV coordinate to get this normal. So we need to use a surface closest point. So I'm going to double click and type SRF space CP surface closest point. It asks for the sample point, which is my center and my surface, which is the split surface. And this UV point, or this UV, is what's gonna plug into my evaluate surface. And you'll see that now there's a normal vector that's gonna come out. So I can, I can then use that vector for the move operation, because I wanna get this point off of the surface. I want to get it off the surface so that I can make this the peak of my pyramid and from the peak of my pyramid connect to this edge, to this edge, to this edge, to this edge, building that pyramid. So to move it off of the, uh, the surface in the normal direction, I'm going to use the move component. So move allows me to move. What am I going to move? The point. I'm going to move it in this direction, but I want to control the height of that pyramid. So I'm going to say amplitude, double click, hit AMP, amplitude. This allows us to grab a vector, which is going to be our normal direction, and input a number. In my case, I'm just going to say 2.34 to give me a slider and then plug that vector into my, uh, my translation vector here. So this is where I'm moving that. And I'm going to hide some of this stuff as it's getting kind of messy. But now you're seeing that I'm moving all of these points from the center. I'm moving them, in this case, down right off of that center. And then just to visualize this, I'll double click and type line SDL. This creates a line. I'm just trying to show you the, the actual vector that this is creating. So a start point, that's our center point. Direction is the normal and the length is this. So what we're doing is creating a line uh, based on the normal direction of each of these surfaces. Okay, so as I pull this out, it's doing that. If I wanted this to flip the other way, I can reverse this vector. Double click, reverse, and then plug that in here. Okay. Okay, so I've reversed the direction to be up in this case. All right, so using the normal, creating the peak of my pyramid. And then from the peak of my pyramid, I need to tell Grasshopper to draw a line from here to each of these corner points in my grid. So I'm going to say draw a line, so line. And I'm going to go from, so it asks for a start and an end point. Start point is the peak of my pyramid, which is my moved point. And the end is going to be the corners of this surface. Um, so what I'll do is deconstruct, or here it is, deconstruct BREP. I'm going to take the surface, plug it in. So from this, I have faces, edges, and vertices. So each vertex, so each 
basically each corner of the box that's what I want to be my end and you'll see it's going crazy with these lines I want to graft the area point so now what I'm left with and I'll hide this illustration line what I'm left with is this series of pyramids which I can then control with the height of this. Okay, so I have my lines going from the center, which has been moved up to each corner. And if I want to pipe these, I can do that. So I'm going to use the pipe command. Those are my curves to pipe. The radius, this is going to vary for everybody. Use a slider to pull this way down. And so just like that, you can have a kind of a space truss. Um, one thing I want to add is edges around this. So I want the actual perimeter of my frame to be piped as well. So I'm going to plug in all of my edges, because remember I'm decomposing that surface, I'm gonna plug my edges into the pipe as well. And I'm gonna hold shift so that it does both. And now I have everything. If I middle mouse click and bake, you'll see that it's duplicating these because it's grabbing the, this edge of that surface and this edge of that surface. Um, so you could get rid of that in Grasshopper, or you could get rid of that in Rhino. In Rhino, you can just type cell DUP. Looks like they're not exact duplicates, I guess. Okay, so they're not exact duplicates, so it won't let me select it there. Um, Kangaroo has a way to remove duplicate lines. So we can try that. Assuming these are all lines. So now we went from by flattening this. And again, I just um, I use the remove duplicate lines component. And this is under the kangaroo tab. This is a utility for getting rid of any duplicate lines. And so I plugged this into my original edges, flattened it, and I'm going to plug that into this. So I'm going to go there and there. So let's see what happens when I bake this. Now these are individual lines. It removed all of the duplicate lines. All right, so save this. Close Grasshopper, and what you're left with is a space truss based on that surface. I'm going to hit Show Selected because I hit it earlier. And um, yeah, so a traditional space truss, these would probably be facing down. There might be additional structural elements, but this is uh, kind of a basic script to subdivide a surface into panels take the center of that panel, move it up, create these pyramids, which we can use as structure. Um, you could panelize any of the other surfaces if you wanted to create some kind of exoskeleton. Uh, all of that is possible with this kind of basic script.